<laughs> <There we go. laughs> nah, don't worry, don't worry. So, now that we're hosted, I guess we can finally get the show underway. Welcome, everyone, in the stream to Guild Wars 2 Raid Roundtable. We're going to be discussing, we have the boss with us right there. He'll be introducing himself in a minute. We are going to be taking the next hour to talk about Raids Guild Wars 2, the one boss that we've seen available, and speculate on what it's going to mean for the future of raiding in Guild Wars 2. But before we do that, I would like these fine gentlemen to all introduce themselves. Why don't we start with Doror here? I am uh, I'm Doror. Um, I, I, uh, I do stuff in uh, Guild Wars 2. I've been here since launch, and uh, I, have a, I have a real, real big passion for, uh, for challenging content. So, so this, is, uh, this is an interesting topic indeed with the, the raids and, uh, and stuff. Yeah. I have no prior... Um, What's it called? Uh, no prior uh, experience with other MMOs um, and raiding. So this is actually, I, I've I've tried uh, or I've, I played Guild Wars One. I played Guild Wars Two, and and that's a, that's about a, that's about my MMO experience. Yeah. Body Doc, why don't you give us your introduction? Ah, uh, most of you know me as a RNG Jesus, hardcore <laughs> Guild Wars fan, uh, eight seven years. PvP hardcore player in Guild Wars 1 as a monk healer and when I joined Guild Wars 2 since Alpha, uh, the better. Actually I missed a little bit the healer and now with the Druid my prayers have been heard and <laughs> guess who will be back in game. You. And of course I'm going to use my Druid as a healer. The dream, the dream is real. Thank you. The champ is the champ is back. Champ is here, and Teapot. Why don't you tell them a little bit about yourself? Hello there, everyone. I'm I'm Mighty Teapot. I enjoy dank memes, and <laughs> I make uh, I make interesting theories about Guild Wars Two. Like I prove the world is flat and stuff like that. And then I dabble in lots of random stuff as well on Twitch, and that's it. That sounds almost like a like a dating website. I enjoy dank <laughs> memes by the beach. I <laughs> Um, Raise your so I, think, I think you'll find we're a good match. <laughs> and I am Mr. Happy1227. I'm actually coming into this as someone who has always had an appreciation for Guild Wars 2, what it is an MMO. I played it on and off for the past three years. Uh, but I'm coming in with more of an outside perspective. I've raided in plenty of other MMOs. I do world progression in Final Fantasy XIV. So raids is something that are near and dear to my heart. So I'm glad that we have this afternoon, about an hour, to discuss these things. And you guys will probably be educating me a little bit when it comes to these exact things, because you guys are the experts, especially after introductions like that. Uh, well, OK, we may be setting, setting things <laughs> up here, but all right. <laughs> all right, so let's just get right into it. Raids, something Guild Wars 2 has not had in three years. We've had fractals, but now we have raids. And we have dungeons, dungeons, which are now which are now getting uh, obsolete. But that's another thing. Yeah, we could talk about that another time. But <laughs> going into it now, we, we are following up. Um, you know, the, those who came before us. Thank you, uh, Shaq, by the way, for running the show for the past hour. Uh, but so let's just cover real quick. What did the beta give us access to in terms of raids? It literally just gave us access to the first boss. We don't actually even know if there's going to be anything before it. Um, or or we, I think we just exited the host mode. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Rest in peace. Anyways, oh, no. okay. that's why. Right. Right. Nah, don't I'll, worry I'll, about it. Don't worry about I'll, it. I'll I'll keep I'll keep going. Anyways, <laughs> um, we don't actually know if there's gonna be anything prior to to the boss event. If there's any any leading up or or whatever, but we we basically only got access to to that single boss. So. Uh, so yeah, um, the Veil Guardian and the the three three considered trash mobs prior to the Veil Guardian. They're they're con they're considered trash mobs in in the regard that they teach you the mechanics, not that they are actual trash. They're still legendary, but they're not the actual boss. That's well, what we got with to. the Veil Guardian, who here got to test the Veil Guardian? I didn't. I did uh, for a short time. We had this we had this uh, horrible uh, scenario where we were we were so ready. Um, and everything just bugged out. Like, and w once we finally got in, and we got to the Veil vale Guardian, um, our our raid leader he he disconnected, um, and we were like, okay, uh, we'll we'll try we'll try with nine men now. And like for every time 
we uh, we uh, wiped, we lost a man. Like it, it just disconnected <laughs> one man at a time. So <laughs> that's like, we, hardcore. That's a real yeah. interesting raid mechanic right there. <laughs> yeah, it was horrible. It was horrible. It, it was it was fun trying, but we we didn't get to complete it because we didn't get to enter it again afterwards, unfortunately. What about you, T Pop Body Doc? Either you two get to try the raid in one of the recent beta tests? Yep. Managed to got a got a group pre-made group all hyped up, and we managed to get down to about forty percent. Yeah. Although actually, if you look at the fight, our DPS wasn't even close to good enough because uh, it, it phases twice, and uh, we would have failed miserably. He would have just got to the enraged time, and we would have got wrecked. Uh, but yeah, it was a lot of fun. Uh, the mechanics are. They they didn't actually get old. Yeah, it was very enjoyable <laughs> to do. <laughs> and what about you, buddy? Oh, I managed to join immediately with the primate group, and our primate group actually was pretty concentrated. And we managed to figure out how to kill the trash mobs or the trash bosses or uh, the core guardians uh, before the veil one. And in the moment when we hit the veil guardian, we, of course we wiped in the first uh, try. And the rates crashed. That story. <laughs> seems, this is this is an unfortunate theme that seems to be. It's like it's like, it's like a, the best teaser ever. Like test it, test it for a second. You can just taste it. Just get a, get a little poke, and then you're out. Like just, you, you gotta wait. You gotta wait now. But just charging on Monday, the sword. on Monday when they uh, actually Arena extended uh, the period of uh, testing the rates, I managed. I managed to reach uh, the veil. Uh, Guardian, uh, of course, without uh, organized group, it was pretty hard. We we're uh, dying and dying and dying. Mm -hmm. So I'm preparing a few friends to organize and uh, beat this Veo Guardian or uh, the boss that we are going to see or the bosses that we are going to see in the future. Because I believe it's not going to be only one. It's not going to be you know oh, just the Veo Guardian. No, no, yeah. no. Well, we could spend the entire podcast talking about Veil vale Guardian's mechanics. Luckily, those who came before us did an excellent job of discussing the different mechanics of the individual Guardians and how they work. Definitely. Again, thank you guys. So let's use that more as a ground to speculate on what this could mean for the future of Guild Wars 2 rating. You know, we got to get ahead of ourselves whenever there's new content and start thinking about what we don't even have yet. <laughs> so mechanics and DPS uptime limited. You really have to pay attention to these things, and you can't just dawdle around and dodge everything and expect to get a kill. Are you in no, agreement with this? No. no, I completely agree. Um, there, there's the now we we saw a couple of uh, succeeded attempts, um, uh, a few. I don't actually remember uh, how many, but we saw a few, and they were all they were all quite organized. They were all quite, uh, yeah. Um, their team team compositions were interesting in that they were very different from what we we've usually seen um, with like the use of a druid and revenants and stuff like that, which which is really really good. I love I love revenants. So I'm, I'm any, anything that can promote the the use of a revenant is uh, is perfect to me. But, I'll yeah. level a revenant for you then, Durar. I'll make sure <laughs> I level it this Friday when the expansion launches. Yeah. So it seems that you, the thing that you're talking about the most is their good communication so this being the introduction do we think in what what level of communication are we thinking here body doc you seem to be pretty interested in talking about communication with your history in the series uh yes yes uh the communication is going to be so important uh and i can compare it with my experience in guild wars one when uh, i was doing gvgs with uh my friends and uh there you, you need a pretty organized, good organized communication. So I, I, I can compare the rates with the GVGs from Guild Wars 1 as a part of communication, of course. And uh, without good communication, because if we see in uh, the future rates bosses that, uh, that needs uh, conditions, that needs damage, that needs uh, some different tactic, and uh, especially for the heals from the Druids, or guardians. I also believe we are going to see guardian healers in the future in the raids. So uh, we we will need a good communication, and uh, I believe also that even the pre-made parties uh, will try to organize themselves uh, to get in you know, a voice communication somehow. 
no matter what uh, program they're going to use. I believe we are going to see that. And of course, from the beginning of uh, the release of Guild Wars 2, that's the main point, to, part, to, to party with others, to communicate, to become one. And it looks like we'll have the opportunity here. Now, you brought up something interesting that is, I hear a lot of people talk about stats in Guild Wars 2. It's something that's kind of been a bit of a stale point, but it seems like they're trying to work on implementing a sort of Trinity, which hasn't really ever been a thing. One of Guild Wars 2's biggest things is like, there is no Trinity. Everyone has like some things here, and they all do damage and all that. That's that's discussable. Or, yeah, we'll we'll yeah. discuss it a little bit more. I see you're getting excited <laughs> for this conversation right now. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, for example, just real quick, the the, the Veil vale Guardian has three other Guardians that are both part of the fight and beforehand. Blue Guy requires you to be able to strip boons, which will require specific abilities. Red Guy requires conditional damage, which will require specific gear and uh, and weapons in order to do. And a Green Guy, you know, damage, group healing. All these things are important, and these are pretty standard to MMOs. Teapot, since we haven't gotten to you yet, how do you feel about Soft Trinity entering its way? And more importantly, even though I know Dorora is going to comment on this after, is the Zerker meta dead? Uh, I think uh, the the Soft Trinity is <clears throat> is is actually ideal in in every way because the conventional Trinity is a pretty tired old thing, in my opinion. Uh, some people do enjoy it, and I think it it certainly has its place. Uh, I mean, uh, in in World of Warcraft, it works incredibly well, and in other MMOs as well, it does exactly what it's supposed to do, but in Guild Wars 2, where we have this action-based combat system, uh, a soft trinity, well, a damage control and support is working a lot better because there's so much active defense, healing is not as important as it is in any other game, really, because you can just block stuff, you can simply dodge things, and just not really take any damage. And actually, uh, I think that in the future, people are going to be able to do these raids with complete damage and no support at all. I think it will be possible. Well, at least the Veil Guardian. I think the Veil Guardian, when people have really gotten the mechanics down, they'll be able to do it with just full DPS. And that means that, uh, to answer the question, the, the Zerka meta is intact for now. Uh, because, uh, I mean, the way I see the Berserker meta, it, it, Zerka is obviously the type of armor with your uh, power, precision, and ferocity. But it, it does extend more to... Uh, only damage is really useful in PvE content. That's what the Zerka meta uh, means to me, but uh, what do you think about I, that, I think, I, I think that's fair. Real quick, I'll comment on that, because I already know conditional NGs. If I don't see one on the Red Guardian, I'm going to be very sad with almost every raid crew. <laughs> they, especially uh, NGs, now that you just brought it up, uh, they currently they have insane uh, damage. Like, Two sin sinister NGs would be incredible. Like it, it really would be be some damage. Um, the the funny thing though is that like uh, we we actually saw or like we tested we uh, a couple of us we saw some high ticks of condi condition damage as well on the revenant and like yeah um, well to to get back to the to the whole uh, soft trinity thing if if I may um, the the thing about the soft trinity is that like it, we have um, what is it? Um, well, <laughs> damage, damage, <laughs> damage control and support. That was Jesus. That was, that just slipped my mind for a second. The thing yeah, is, like, here. damage, damage and support in in uh, in general has been the most prominent things that we've seen. Control, like in in the 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 stuff we have right now, control has not seen so much use because uh, the mobs, the encounters that we actually see, are not. Um, they they're they're too malleable. They're too too easy to control into a corner, and that's what we've seen as control. Like we lock them there, for, or like we stack them on top of each other, and and that's what we see as control. It, sometimes, not always. The thing with like the Veil vale Guardian, that, that was that was actually a a really interesting thing for me because that that sort of pushed the. Um, the, the the level of control that we needed in in that especially I think I think actually uh, RPG Shack uh, earlier said that because uh, because he had a lot of toughness uh, the Veil vale Guardian was following him uh, we actually saw that because we were running a lot of uh, high damage specs we saw that it was basically just the the raid leader that was getting uh, targeted by by the uh, by the Veil vale Guardian and so 
that level of control where you, you're maneuvering him around the map because we have the mobility of the boss in a whole other level than we usually have seen. Um, it, it just it, it creates it creates a lot more um, yeah that uh, it, a lot more uh, what's it called engagement into the action based combat that we see and which is so heavily ingrained into Guild Wars 2 and I think that is a really really good thing and um, the the other bosses that we've only seen teasers of I like as early as like two hours ago there's a new blog post with uh, the the other um, I think I, I forgot her name uh, it, it's a speculative name, anyways. But there, there's this huge engineer, Norn, uh, with a flamethrower or whatever, um, and she's actually standing on a platform similar to the Tongue Boss and to the Veil Guardian, where you cannot you cannot get around this mechanic of mobility. Like you have to you have to count, uh, work around it. You have to actually control the boss to a certain degree so that it, it's in your group's favor. And I think that's going to be a really really interesting play to see. I think that's going to add a lot of uh, a lot of play to the, the to the higher higher skilled players. If that sentence makes sense, but yeah, no, it it makes sense. When more content comes out, you have to you have to kind of approach the game. You have to learn and be able to adapt. And that's always been a big thing about raids. As somebody who gets into them a lot, I was excited watching the Veil vale Guardian footage, a full kill footage, because they were never just standing in one place. There was coordinated knockbacks. Of ads, there was split damage between the different responsibilities you needed during ad phases. There was constant adjustment required because two thirds of the arena was covered. It was all good basic things that raids need in order to encourage adaptive play. Adaptive play also comes with, as I said, party composition. Mm -hmm. So we've been talking about the Zerker. What it seems they want the parties to be more adaptive to every boss. You can't just be, oh, I I play Zerker and that's all I play, or I just play tank and that's all I play. It seems that they want people to be more adaptive with both the weapons they use on an individual boss and the armor that they wear and the actual role that they try to fulfill. Mm. So enough damage, enough heals, conditions, boon strips. How are people going to people are going to have to get used to being able to play multiple specs. Is that something that you think is right for rage? Or do you think that people should be allowed to have a play style and a preferred weapon and that's the way that they approach raiding? I, I, I can take this, or you guys, uh, you guys feel free to. Doc T, either of you yeah. want to get in on this? Um, yeah, I, I can say something about that. Uh, I cannot agree completely with uh, that uh, we that they are going to make us to play a certain class or certain specs because uh, each class can be uh, a part healer, a part condition damage uh, dealer, and uh, a part berserker. So. I think it's more a uh, personal preference here what you are going to play because uh, you can make your uh, elementalist condition, you can make your uh, elementalist uh, berserker, you can make your uh, ranger or druid, healer, berserker and condition dealer, the necromancer is the same, the guardian is the same. So we, we have the option, uh, they give us the option and we, we have to choose, that's our uh, decision what we are going to run. And uh, if you prepare few characters uh, with different, for, the, for example, if you have uh, a necromancer uh, condition with uh, elementalist damage dealer and uh, druid healer, and when your friends gather or uh, pre-made party and they need uh, one healer, you, you, you're going to be, okay, I can switch right now, just give me, give me one moment, and you switch directly from condition to healer, and here we go. No one is saying, okay, you have to play only healer or you have to play only condition. And that's why you're going to experience a much bigger part of the game itself, which I respect and I like. It's good what do you think? It's good to be able to no. be flexible. Yeah, I would agree exactly. with that. I would agree with that standpoint. I, I don't think, well, I hope they don't set up raids in a way that it uh, ostracizes certain professions from being considered viable uh, by the the player base, because there is a certain negative stigma against certain professions right now, uh, and hopefully raids will abolish that, and everyone will be able to be viable. And as uh, Body Doc <coughs> very correctly pointed out, uh, it is in a lot of cases it can just be as simple as you can switch your gear, and suddenly you are equipped to deal with uh, another 
type of encounter and that will set you on your way. Personally, I uh, if if I can take the um, personally, I think that uh, we're we're gonna see a shift. It all it all depends on every encounter we see. Uh, especially if we take the Veil Guardian, for example, Elementalist did not see much. Uh, I, I'm gonna use the word viability, just because most of their highest damage uh, skills were very um, uh, AOE based. They were very um, mm what's it called I'm gonna I'm gonna stationary or whatever it was located in in like the the meteor shower or whatever yeah. and and as long as you have to keep the the boss moving they're they're gonna get out of those fields they're gonna you're gonna lose damage in that regard but if we if we see and I'm, I'm thinking that could be a, a real big possibility if we see on like the tongue boss like the what we expect to be the yeah. last boss um, that he's actually stationary that will switch that completely Again, um, it's it's only it's all it's all about the encounter. Obviously, it's it's always about the encounter. Yeah, as as someone who's done world progression, I've had to have a lot of conversations about efficiency. You know, what classes or in this case professions are most efficient, and even if it's doable with other pro uh, professions, it's really going to be up to the mindset of the community. If the community says no, this is what's best, it's hard to break even the people who want to play something different. They kind of get shoehorned into well if i don't play this i have far fewer people that are willing to play with me and that's always a concern with raiding with me i'm hoping guild wars 2 doesn't fall into that i'm sure there will be some optimizations people say this is hands down the best for this encounter the exact professions with this exact spec but hopefully the raids are bounced to the point where if you don't care about what those people say you can still get it done with the profession you enjoy playing i am of a somewhat um, somewhat similar opinion. Um, it shouldn't be that you have to max out everything. You have you, you you don't necessarily like. We saw the Veil Guardian uh, completed with like I think it was a clerics that drew it. I I'm I'm heavily speculating that clerics will will not see much use in the the higher skill because healing. Uh, they've said that they're 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 changing the healing uh, coefficients and if rangers actually need to be useful. Uh, doing other things like in the the time that they're not healing all the time, we will see zealots, for example, which is power, precision, and healing power. Um, that would be that would be an amazing combo because that way uh, rangers could see uh, a lot more use both on the damage side, and we could we could get the boss down faster. We could still keep people alive. Um, I, I'd much rather see that. I'd much rather see. Um, like focus on, on on the damage still like not not to say that people have to go all full elitist and and meta 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 but no they um, have to to roar it's all, yeah not allowed to tell them they're not allowed it's <laughs> mandatory How it's, dare a, it's, a you. it's really cool when it happens though like when when you can beat uh, the timer of eight minutes in like five minutes because you have that team comp like I f I feel that is that is uh, that is a lot more prestige to it than than just just doing it just doing it. Just the one in. Yeah. yeah, I like that. I, uh, I, I, yeah. On that, I think I think we're agreed, Roy. And we already saw people beat the boss with one ten left on the clock, and that was with. Well, I mean, I don't know how long they actually had to do that, but I think it's it, nine minutes. With, I think that's the end uh, is nine. I know. I, I was mainly uh, referring to how long they actually had access to raids, uh, mm, because okay. it, with all the downtime and stuff, I'm not sure how long they were attempting it to get it to that. Mm. Uh, does anyone anyone know? I pass. Yeah, but Passes either well. way, I mean, uh, that does to me raise uh, a certain uh, kind of issue with the difficulty because I mean, they uh, Guild Wars Two. I mean, they were saying that it was going to be uh, you know really really difficult, and then you have these players uh, just destroy destroy it uh, really easy. They in their defense, they did say they're going to be harder. That's the easiest boss, just the warm up, mm. uh, but. I'd like to hear you your guys' thoughts on uh, if ArenaNet are underestimating the player base somewhat uh, with, in regards to the difficulty, the content. That is a really good question. I, I think it's hard to answer. Like, if you ask someone who's really hardcore if they're underestimating it, the answer is almost always yes, because they aren't the least common denominator when it comes to the community. And the question is, 
what part of the community are the raids being developed for? Are they being developed for the average player who, you know, it feels like an adequate challenge, something they can eventually overcome? Or is it for the hardcore where, yeah, it's the something they'll overcome, but the average is going to find it nigh out of reach? So I feel like that's the question. And also, are there multiple difficulties? Are they doing multiple difficulties no, for these? There's, there's, no, there's not going to be any hard mode or anything. It's just not yet. Be... Not yeah, yet. Yeah, not yet. Not yet. <laughs> Level, oh, yeah, 50, level 50, for, can we, they do it like fractals where they eventually add instabilities to it? I wish they would. Oh. <laughs> that would yeah. be funny. And that agony resistance. No. Yeah, gonna need agony resistance. We're gonna need even more than fractal 100. Yeah, again, it's like fractal to... 150. There you go. <laughs> I don't know, like, uh, to, to a certain degree, and uh, it's, it's, not, it's, a, it's a sort of a frowned upon opinion to have, but like, uh, ArenaNet is somewhat in inclusive in all of their content. Uh, and and it's it's a it's a big scare for a lot of people who have been looking for hardcore content with the raids to to think about the the prospect of them being too inclusive again. Um, so I I think it's a, it's a really valid discussion. Like, are they underestimating the player base? And of course, who are they actually catering this to? I fear that they are catering to the majority. I I honestly do uh, because. Um, if they're not hard enough, we will not see the player base grow. We will not see them get better, try and overcome these challenges if it's, if it's basically just a face roll. Like, I'm not saying it is. I'm not saying the Veil Guardian was a face roll. But if it turns out that after a very, very short time, like way shorter than we all expect, it, it, it will be a face roll, then I'd say they, they sort of failed on that. No, no, no. I, I don't think it's going to be face row. If you remember when they released the Quato, what was in the beginning? Everyone is dying. No, I think it took, uh, I can't remember how long uh, it took to, uh, I think, guilt from the solution. I think it was about uh, a minute. Yeah. yeah, but that there is a tactic, you know, and for that, mm. people need to start thinking. Start thinking and to actually apply it. Mm. If they figure it out, so it's, I guess it's going, it's going to be much more interesting in the future. I believe they are going to present to us much more uh, difficult bosses, much more difficult than the Veil Guardian. So uh, mm. I'm happy. Challenge accepted. Yeah, I'll s I'll say as someone who's done my fair share of world progression rating, Veil Guardian is an introductory boss. I feel like that is their introduction into rating overall because the majority of Guild Wars two players, you know. You have fractals if you do them up to level 50. Those are at least for some people a decent challenge. If you you know depending on what your agony resistance is looking like. Mechanically though, you were saying people just box things into a corner and destroy it. There's very little thought. And then you have world events. People aren't haven't been trained to do things like they have to do in raids. They're trained to do things a very specific way. Mm -hmm. And I think Veil vale Guardian, while it's not the most mechanically difficult fight within the context of Guild Wars 2. It's looking like a nice introduction, something that will get people in the door and interested in raiding, which is something mm. you need when you've never had this content before. Definitely. I think everything after will be much, much more difficult. But the first raid tier is only three bosses, isn't it? Plus whatever uh, dynamic events are we in between. We don't actually know. We don't have a solid number yet, but it seems like it's three, yeah. It's, it, it, okay. They say three wings, so I'm guessing three major bosses, yeah. But okay. perhaps there's, yeah. I don't know. Okay. But they they intend to add a good amount a year actually. Uh, I I believe the number they said was they were thinking about six six raids a year or something along those lines. That was six. I, th I think that was like a dream scenario. They could do it. That oh. would be great. I I would not take that as a, that as a. <sighs> so he said it. So it's confirmed because it's on the end. It's confirmed. Right? Yeah. I mean, yeah. it's confirmed, right? That's it. It'll be on, it'll be on Reddit yeah. in five minutes. That's yep. It. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> So we, we spent some time talking about the compositions. We we have show notes. We we're thinking about revisiting it, but we have a lot of speculation we kind of want to get into, and we've started getting into that now. So uh, you guys helped with the notes here because you guys were a bit more knowledgeable in Guild Wars 2. I say a bit, like, you know, a lot more knowledgeable in Guild Wars 2 than I am. A little, little bit, a little bit. So the first thing we have to talk about here, raids being done daily. Now we say that because there are daily challenges in Guild Wars 2. Do a fractal, catch it, capture a tower in World vs. World. We know the raids have a weekly lockout in terms of loot. Do you think that there will be life in 
daily activities within the raid to keep people going into the raids on a daily basis? Or are they going to let this be that thing that it's like, okay, I'm done for the week, I can focus on all the other dailies? That I think that depends um, how invested you are into actually learning the mechanics because I think once you, let's assume you get, you get your reward, you there will be nothing else. If there are no or basically no trash mobs or anything, there will be nothing for you except for the experience of progressing your own skill level. And I think that's, I hope for dear life that that is going to be available every day. Like that it's not just going to lock the entire raid off. Like I want to be able to help my friends out if that's what I if that's what's needed or I want to just practice it with a group over and over and over again even if I have completed I hope for dear life that, that that's a thing. Um So yeah. Definitely de definitely daily. But then again, um the the weekly lockout is so that we can we can focus on the fact that it's uh, it's challenging. It'll take time. It's not just something that's done quickly. And once there's three wings, it's the entire raid. It's every boss that's locked for for uh, for the loot of the week. So you don't have to do like a three hour per wing every day like grind. That would be that would be horrible. <laughs> no, there is no such thing as a grind in Guild Wars Two. No such thing. Legendaries aren't a grind. <laughs> no. Nope. Nope. Not if you're body dark. You can just nope. put eight gold into the Mystic Forge, get a precursor, job done. <sighs> Jelly. Unbelievable. <laughs> so, we were talking about the difficulty. <laughs> he is the boss. He just has yep. to remind us of that. <laughs> um, so, okay, with talking about that with the raids, regardless of whether or not they're daily, what about the LFG tool? LFG tool has worked really well for dungeons, fractals, things like that, that people can hop into pretty comfortably as long as they meet certain requirements raids not so much not so much <laughs> are you looking forward to these in the LFG if at all I I think it says a lot of about like arena nets wish for their challenge so to speak that they don't want uh, players to to be able to just pick up a group so to speak they don't want it to be that easy. That says a lot about their intention. I don't necessarily, I don't necessarily agree with it. Everyone has to start somewhere again. Like, but yeah, I don't know. LG. What do you guys think? I'm I'm afraid right now. A lot of people are selling jumping puzzles, dungeons, and everything. Maybe we're going to see if they added to the looking for a group too. Uh, they are going to start selling raids. <laughs> Yeah, Which I, is I know. It's going to be that. pretty annoying. It's going to be pretty annoying. But uh, it, I, I know a lot of people that actually are running without guilds or uh, a small guilds. And uh, do those guilds, small guilds, under 10 people, mostly friends, well, for them it's going to be pretty hard to get into the raids, you know? And they, they, they will need uh, to have the option to find uh, the missing number of players. I don't know. It's, it all. I, I guess it all depends. I'm oh, sorry. Sorry. No, no, no that's it. Uh, I, I guess it all depends, like where your 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 skill level is per se, like, and your group skill level is, like, uh, will you will you have to push it? But the problem is, a lot of people right now have like a five minute or five man really skilled group or whatever. They will need to find these five new people. Um, if not in their guild, then then where? Uh, yeah. I don't know. I see the potential use for it, um, but I, I appreciate I appreciate the fact that they they might not do it for the LFG just because of their their intentions. Um, well, in, yeah, sorry. sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> Thank you. Well, in that case, if they don't add the rates in looking for LFG group, uh, I believe we are going to see a lot of people running in LA and screaming, uh, "Come to my guild for the rates." <laughs> or join my party for the raid. <laughs> join, join on me. I we have team speed. We'll beat it. Don't worry. And cookies. And we have cookies. Join us. <laughs> we're gonna do the bobblehead raid challenge. That's what we're gonna do. Have to oh, be actually, bobblehead uh, mode. Just to like get back to the point of like selling. There was actually a, an interesting comment in in the chat. You can't keep the bosses one percent, um, which is which is what's usually done when you're selling dungeon paths or whatever. You sort of take the boss down to a certain level. If there's a timer on it, though. You, no. you, there's no chance yeah, for you. You got to bring them in and basically carry one person. Yes, exactly. Yeah, yeah. I've, I've. So 
So that that gate, I uh, yeah, that was a good point. That was a good point. Sorry. Well, uh, I don't we, think that's impossible though. You think it's, it's not impossible? impossible. Oh, that's, no, that's I don't think. Oh no 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 no! no, 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 no. I don't it's possible. Think that's impossible. Yeah, I was gonna say. Yeah, I don't think it's impossible. Yeah. I think I, I'd, I'd be very interested to see. Uh, it will be all over the subreddit, you know, these guys who say, yeah, we did it with, we did it with seven people. Uh, yeah. And I think people will eventually get to that level of skill where they're capable of doing it with less people. I'm not saying it's seven. That's not confirmed, guys. Uh, but I would confirmed. very yeah. much expect to see uh, the Relief. skill players doing it with uh, less than ten, uh, for sure. But maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe even... The, the super pro elite guilds will be struggling with some of the bosses later on down the road. Hopefully. Well, one thing that might keep people interested in the raids uh, is story. They've said that these are not just, you know, mindless encounters, that these raids are part of the world that is Guild Wars 2, and they have important stories behind them. Is that motivation, good motivation for your average player to do it? Is anybody here more motivated by the story than the actual challenge? I I, mean, I come from Final Fantasy 14, where that is actually a major argument about oh, really? sto story and the raids being a motivating factor for them. I, kn I know there's a lot of people... Um, Complaining about the fact that they might not be able to see this part of the story because the the level cap or the the skill cap was so high, um, which really like I, I I completely understand that they we we always have the the explorers of the of the world those who who want every piece of the uh, of the puzzle but like they, there's incentive for everyone I think that's sort of the thing there's challenge there's loot like for the achievers or whatever there's probably going to be achievements. And their story, like there's there's every every incentive that you could want, I think, um, for people to push their own skill level to the point where they can actually do it and, and get these rewards, get these, um, yeah, things. Sorry, uh, I just paused for a second. Mm. Never mind. <laughs> no problem. Don't worry. Yeah, and especially uh -oh. with the uh, the legendary armor, this is something that we kind of talked about before we went live with legendary armor precursors being one of the drops. But that's not all that drops. And they're trying to make multiple raid tiers be relevant without replacing the previous raid tier. It's a very important thing. It's very difficult to do. But with the precursors, we're hoping that that opens up more options. T, legendary armor. <laughs> are you looking forward to beating these bosses for the legendary armor more than the story? Or are you looking at, like, the minion rewards and mm. the, the thing to hang in your guild hall? Mm. Yeah, well, um, when we... Well, I'll go back to the, the story a little bit. I think this is... This is why I'm convinced they may in the future add a casual mode of sorts. It will be with incredibly diminished loot, because I think it's incredibly important that there are... If they do add an easier mode so that uh, the more casual players can experience the story, which I think will be great, uh, it needs to be very well differentiated from the harder mode, so there is some level of prestige from being able to beat the boss at its correct difficulty, uh, so the more experienced players can get their legendary armor, get the those that precursor little bits and stuff like that but uh, as we were discussing previously uh, if the story is important in relation to the lore of the game then I think uh, it would be good if there was some level of facilitation for uh, the more casual player Spe but personally, speaking of that I, I'm in it for the swag I because I, I have to take I have to take you up on that one because um, Ara I think it's Ara P4 okay the, jo the Jotun uh, that path has one of the most uh, interesting story aspects tied into it at the very, very end. And, and I, I'm, I am so sure you guys can, like, in, in chat, you, you will probably know what I'm talking about. The, the telescope, we will probably see a lot more of that because that's related to, to a lot of the things we've seen in Season 2. It's related to everything that, about the dragons and, like, the, ho the whole nature of dragons. But not a lot of people see that. And they never added that. Uh, it's, it's a path one. Jotan. Okay, thanks for correcting me. Um, it's dead. Like, not a lot of people see it. Not a, people, a lot of people remember it. But it's so crucial, I believe. And I really, really hope that they will not make a, a casual mode for that. Doc, I think I, oh, sorry. No, sorry. No, but finish your point. It's just, like, I, I, I really hope the, ch the challenge itself or the... the the incentives are in place for everyone to, to take part in it. Well, we only have a few minutes left here, guys. So, Doc, I'll leave you with the last word on this. Legendary armor, other rewards, story. Where do your motivations lie with the raid? 
Well, I'm going to go a little off topic here because I want to mention something that I missed for a long, long time. Something that uh, has been present, but it was removed. And that's the loot from the trash mobs. Especially, uh, we, we don't get loot, or at least we get a small loot uh, from the dungeons, from the fractals. I miss that. I miss that. There are a lot of events uh, which uh, actually have a big group of mobs, but after killing them, you get nothing. There is no loot. I want to see that back with uh, the expansion and the raids. Not, not only the raids, the entire expansion. Uh, I'm talking about trash mobs that we're going to kill. I want to see the loot. It's going to, uh, it's not going to become a grind game, uh, but it will return a lot of people to do some of those stuff because a lot of people stopped doing dungeons, fractals, uh, only because of that. Because they have no motivation. They have one reward at the end, and that's it. It's going to be nice to have something, you know, uh, aside from uh, the legendary armor when do we are doing the raids. And, uh, for example, um, at the end of the fractals, when the difficult goes up with uh, the fractal level, I hope to see something like that, progressive, in uh, the raids. We are going to get the legendary armor at one point, but in between, you know, to get something with the legendary armor, or uh, maybe till we get to the legendary, arm legendary armor to get the part for the precursor, maybe crafting, or uh, something connected, or uh, a reward to make us happy for the guild hall, for uh, even, why not uh, a skin? Skill Wars or too. we gotta have more skins. All yeah. the fashion wars. Uh, fashion wars. Fashion wars. Don't worry. Most Something like that. Men. Something like that. Don't worry. We have fashion wars. I'm I'm used to I'm used to fashion being a thing. Don't worry. Well, guys, uh, that's all the time that we have here. We got started a little bit late, but the raid roundtable discussion is not technically over. It's just we're we are done for this part. There's still one more <laughs> going on, so be sure to head over to twitch.tv slash Guild Wars 2. They are going to be hosting the final set of raid discussions that are going on today. But before we wrap up, I want to give everybody here, especially the boss over there, the, <laughs> the opportunity to shout them, to shout out their social media, you know, where they're streaming. Exclamation mark hosts in the chat will also give you their Twitch information so you guys can go throw them a follow. Uh, T-Pop, why don't we start with you? Where can they find you at? Hey, you guys can find me on YouTube, uh, youtube.com forward slash mighty teapot. The link just got posted in chat to my Twitch and you can see the schedule and loads of other information there and finally you can follow me on Twitter uh, if you like uh, dank memes and random updates started with stuff. dank memes ended with dank memes oh yeah and that's <laughs> at Mighty <laughs> Teapot on Twitter <laughs> so if any of that stuff sounds good to you please follow and thanks very much for watching guys Doror where can they find you my friend uh, you can find me on on Twitch the link is obviously in the in the in the chat and I'm, I'm mostly on YouTube though, um, at or, uh, YouTube slash Deroyer Gaming, or you can find me on Twitter, of course, in the little handle here. I hope I'm, I'm pointing the right way. No, you, you did the second Deroyer one. Gaming. There yeah, <laughs> Deroyer Gaming. Um, so yeah, that's, uh, that's where I'm hiding. And Body Doc, finish it off, my man. Uh, okay, I'm going to make a nice finish slash <laughs> Twitch TV slash Body Doc. With now C. hosting MMO Inks. <laughs> <laughs> we'd see and yeah you're welcome I'm streaming almost every day uh, from uh, Friday where of course like everybody else expansion and I'm focusing on making gold that's it making gold making gold it's a good goal he's a good goal he is very links to, him, good links to my Twitter and uh, YouTube you can find uh, on my Twitch thank you and I am the final host that, well, you guys are the only people left are the ones here already, so you know where to find me. Because <laughs> they, uh, they, they went on and they, they hosted the next one. But if you're, here from the, if you're here from the Guild Wars 2 channel and you're here in our chat, uh, Mr. Happy1227, Twitch, Twitter, uh, Facebook, and then on YouTube, it's still Mr. Happy1227, but the link is Xehanort1227 because it was 16 and like Kingdom Hearts 2 at one point. <laughs> so that's where that is. Thank you everyone for joining us. Hopefully you enjoyed this little Thank you. Ra raid roundtable. Go show some love to the next, uh, to MMO Inks. 
that is where they are now or over at the Guild Wars 2 channel. Thank you, everyone, for coming by. And normally I say we'll see you next time, but I don't know that's... Everyone here will see you eventually. <laughs> we'll go with We that. will see, see you. See each other. Yeah. See you. In On the mess. Twitch. In the mess. For yeah. Mother Russia. For Mother Russia. <laughs> Listen to the boss. All right, well... <laughs>